All right, good evening, you insomniac crazy folks. Welcome to Friday Night Live. <laughs> I am the pet man, Matt Moore. I'm here with the engine, Kenneth McClamrock. Uh, we'll see if any of the other CFI friends join us. Um, but if not, that's all right. We'll rock it out with everyone that's watching tonight. So uh, just like we always do, post your scores of your teams, um, and we'll talk about them. But first of all, Kenneth, you were at um, – Huff and North Mech tonight. Uh, what what were your thoughts? Yeah, uh, Huff looked really good. Uh, you know, North Mech did some really nice things. Coach Vrain, who was on the show last week with us, uh, his defense did some really nice things. I thought they swarmed to the football well. Coach Warrior's defensive line got after it. They had a couple of passes knocked down early on uh, in the game. In fact, I saw something I haven't seen maybe ever in a football game. Each team had a high-low block penalty called against them in the first quarter. That was a little bit strange. Uh, but, you know, like we all knew, Huff in the end was just a little bit too strong, a little bit too fast, too too uh, athletic. I believe that Huff had um, two kickoff returns for touchdowns. They also had a punt return for a touchdown. Um, North Mac did not pick up their first first down until some point late in the second quarter. Um, you know, so North Bank's defense was backed up on their own goal line for the majority of the night. Uh, I thought the kids battled hard, uh, you know, but Huff um, is just too athletic. They're, they're, they're pretty stinking good. Uh, North Mech does have some pretty good size. They're very big up front. They do have some athletes. Number one uh, uh, impressed me as a wide receiver. He called a big touchdown. He had a couple other plays. Um, number 11, defensive end, I believe it was a junior uh, long, probably 6'4", 210, 215. Honestly, he reminds me a lot of the Pierce kid at Vance and the way that he looks. Um, they also have the, the big boy, of course, that Coach Vereen talked about at defensive line, uh, the big freshman, number 85. Uh, you know, and they've got size up front, but in the end, Huff is just too big, too fast. Um, Huff didn't do anything particularly fancy. Their their offensive play calling was was nothing crazy. They only threw the ball. I don't know if they threw the ball ten times uh, tonight, but um, Huff was a good good game. Uh, if I'm being honest, they looked a little uninspired uh, in their play, but you know they, they won fifty six to fourteen. Uh, North Bank scored twice late. Unmute myself. Good gracious. <laughs> That's good stuff. Congrats to Huff on a big win. Of course, sets them up for the big game next week against Chambers at Memorial Stadium, part of Big Friday that's hosted by the Carolina Panthers. So, obviously, we might talk about that a little bit next week. Uh, I'll say this, <laughs> uh, you know, although he didn't throw the ball a whole lot, uh, I thought their quarterback uh, looked much more comfortable um, a lot more mobility in the pocket um, compared to – granted, compared to the playoff game versus Vance. Um, but the way that he moves, the way that he steps up, the way that he slides, he's very under control. Um, you know, Huff is a good football team. Their DBs are, are very good, uh, like, of course, everyone knows. Uh, and, and they've got some kids who can make, can make the plays. Uh, the running back is a very physical runner. Uh, I think he maybe played at another school in the county last year, um, and you could tell he was he was looking to make the punishing runs. It seemed like at times he was almost more worried about punishing the defender than he was picking up the extra yards. Uh, he was playing very very physical tonight. Yeah, that's Xavier Turner Knox, and he played at North Met uh, last year, so you know there was some inspiration, I'm sure, uh, for that young man tonight. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get it out the way since you guys seem to want to comment on it so much. Mizzle, welcome. What a game between Mooresville and Cox Mill. Absolutely was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let me tell you, first of all, Kyle, I didn't say algorithm. Okay. I said analytics. <laughs> the analytics said to pick Cox Mill, which we all did. So the analytics were wrong once again, and we'll have to fix our analytics machine. Okay. We'll work on it. 
But congratulations that was to Lawrence. Killing Moore. me tonight. Killing me tonight. <laughs> Yes, Joe Nixon did a great job getting the team ready. I mean, this is when it counts. Money times in conference play. And, um, you know, you get it done in conference play, that'll lead you to the promised land. So, you know, great job, you know, to the Blue Devils for sure. See, I took it that Cal's algorithm comments was uh, the pet man algorithm that chose the games for Wednesday night for this Friday uh, pretty much left me as an offer tonight. I don't know if I won a single game. Night. <laughs> oh, we'll have to look at that. We'll have to look at that for sure. <laughs> All right. Um, our buddy D1 Media Pro does a great job streaming games. Um, covered West Westshield and Mallard Creek game. Creek looked good. Uh, Mallard Creek won that game 29-14. to 14. So that puts Mallard Creek at 2-1 and one on the season. And that is uh, West Charlotte's first loss on the season. So I think they're also 2-1. Um, so, you know, good job, you know, to the Mavericks for um, getting a big win opening up conference play. Um, if anyone's got some details on Mallet Creek, West Charlotte, you know, feel free to throw them out there. And, uh, you know, we'll share them and we'll talk about it. All right. Drawn over Owen, 36-7. That's a big win for Drawn up in the foothills of North Carolina. Uh, getting it going when it counts. Um I kind of had a slow start to the season, but I think that's two wins in a row now for Drawn. Um, so good stuff for them, and uh, congratulations. All right, we got South Point 28, Stuart Kramer 21. I know some people were kind of surprised on Twitter when they saw the closeness of this game. I think Stuart Kramer had a lead um, at some point, but um, the Red Raiders found a way to pull it out and uh, get a, a big victory um in their conference opener uh so good stuff and uh Stuart Kramer you know making some progress um they're gonna be a problem if they're playing with South Point like that so uh good job on both sides uh for sure uh Chris Hagler no hangover for Hickory Ridge tonight absolutely not <laughs> I mean I was seeing updates where I think Hickory Ridge was up was it 36 to nothing in the first quarter over A.L. Brown I mean when was the last time we've seen that? I mean, I, if ever, um, you know, throughout A.L. Brown's history. So, um, I, I think they were ready to play. Um, you know, being right there with Chambers, you know, and we kind of talked about it on the show. Um, is it a hangover when you lose a game like that, or does it fire you up the next week? And obviously for Hickory Ridge, it fired them up. <laughs> and they ended up winning that game 48-14. Uh, to 14. So, uh, big – uh, conference opening win for Hickory Ridge, and um, you know we'll see where we go from there. Uh, good stuff. So Michelle also mentioning Hickory Ridge over A.O. Brown. Uh, she's got it 49-14. So um, that last name looks familiar. So are you related to Mr. Alex Bentley, the quarterback? Because he's a heck of a player if you are. <laughs> That's awesome stuff right there. All right. Uh, Robbie Jones, Lake Norman 43, Mount Pleasant 18. This was a score that was surprising. I was surprised, in, you know, to see that kind of margin. Uh, Robbie says they were bigger, stronger, faster, 60 players to our 28. So, you know, all those things obviously make a difference. And, um, you know, it did tonight, you know, in this game uh, for Lake Norman. Ken, if you had something on that? Uh, no, uh, you know, I, I, this is not an indictment on, on Mount Pleasant by any means. You know, Lake Norman is a, is a really good 4A team uh, who, who do a heck of a job up there. Um, Mount Pleasant still a good football team. But, uh, you know, I think it shows the disparity between a 2A team and, and a 4A team, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, there you go. Uh, well said. Um, Justin Oden coming in with Porter Ridge 25, Audrey Kill 14. The Queen was there. Uh, she did an interview with uh, Mr. Uh, Kennedy after the game, a star player for Porter Ridge who did a good job. It's on Twitter, so make sure you check that out. And um, I know she'll have some highlights. Um, we'll get those out as soon as we can. Uh, the way we do it, I just kind of get them, you know, and download them, and then we post them, you know, once that happens. So hopefully sometime this weekend uh, we'll be able to get some highlights out on um, Instagram is usually where they uh, get put. So, um, if you're a Porter Ridge player, RJKL player, you know, hang tight, and hopefully we'll be able to feature, 
you know, some of your plays from that game from the field level camera, which is always cool. <laughs> but congratulations to Porter Ridge, now 3-0 and on the season. Um, RJ Kell getting their first loss on the season. And also, um, Mr. Scott Curtis, you know, who's a regular on Friday Night Live, he <laughs> sent me a message and wanted me to call him, and he said he's not ducking any, you know, shame talk for losing, but they're driving uh, to Cornell, him and Jack. Uh, R.G. Gill's quarterback. They're driving for their official visit to Cornell right now. Uh, they got an 11-hour drive, so <clears throat> he couldn't join the show tonight. But he did want to shout out uh, Porter Ridge's O.C. He felt like their offensive play calling was really good. Um, so they made some really good calls in, in third and long situations. Um, and they had some really good, strong time management. So he did want to, you know, shout out. You know, Porter Ridge and their offensive coordinator and their offensive execution. So, uh, congratulations once again to the Pirates. Um, we had them number 12 in the Dirty Dozen. Some people said, why are Porter Ridge still in there and they haven't played a game? This is why. <laughs> so, they backed it up. Uh, good stuff. Familiar face, Coach Joe Evans chiming in. Who'd you pick in our game, Pip? <laughs> Well, we did not pick Catawba Ridge and South Mech, but South Mech, you know, really showed up strong tonight. And that was my game, so I'll go ahead and break that down. All right, so for South Mech and Catawba Ridge, um, coming into this game, you know, a lot of people felt like this was going to be a really uh, closely played game. Felt like it'd be good all the way through. And, I mean, the people I talked to, you know, had a 50-50 split on it. Um, obviously, the big name, Jaden Davis, the uh, Catawba Ridge quarterback, was, you know, somebody that everyone, you know, had their eyes on. They were wanting to see him up close. Um, most people in Charlotte don't get down to Catawba Ridge. So, you know, there were some people at South Mech tonight really just wanting to to see him and see what the, all the fuss was about. Um, you know, the South Mech students section obviously did their homework. Um, they kept chanting overrated when Jaden wasn't doing too well. And, um, you know, Jaden had a tough game. And the uh, the Ridge offense had a tough game. Um, and that's a lot of that is kudos to the South Mech defense. Um, they consistently pressured uh, Jaden with, you know, four down linemen. And they were able to keep seven in coverage. Um, a lot of times, you know, Jaden couldn't find anyone downfield. Um, had to roll out. Um, scramble rules went into effect, and I mean, South Mech did a really, really good job and just playing um, tight coverage, whether it's man or zone, and the pass rush, you know, really just didn't allow Jaden to get into a rhythm. I, I'm just observing him, and I've seen him a couple times. Um, when he gets into a rhythm, that's when he's really good, and he just never <clears throat> could do that, and that's a big credit to the South Mech defense. Um, you know, flipping on the other side of things. Uh, South Mech offensively, Jacob Newman was the bell cow. Um, had about, I think, 25 carries for about 140 yards and a touchdown. Um, the biggest thing with him, he kept getting those chain moving runs. You know, first downs on the wide zone, inside zone. Um, you know, his vision on those things is, is really strong and that's what makes him, you know, a really good back. Um, but my player of the game was the uh, South Met quarterback, Cam Reese. Um, you know, all the attention was on Jaden Davis, of course, on the other side. But, you know, I think he played the better game. Um, he got South Met on the board with a nice rollout uh, touchdown pass to Ty Quez Millette. Um, there were several third downs where um, he was scrambling, and he wasn't scrambling to run. He was scrambling to throw. And he scrambled the throw, and his throws were pinpoint when he did that. And his receivers made some beautiful catches. Ty Quez had one nice one down the seam. Uh, number 14 had another nice one against double coverage. You'll see in our highlights once we get them out there. Um, but it that was a team win. Everyone on South Mech did a good job tonight from the offensive line who we interviewed, and you'll see that on Twitter and Instagram. Um, to the defense, special team Zane Davis had a couple of um, touchbacks and he hit a, um, a field goal. Um, so that, that's just good stuff, man. And it, you know, South Met moving to four and one, um, they're they're going to be a problem. They're going to be a problem because they have all the elements. Um, 
that it takes to have a team that can, you know, go and do some things, not only in conference play, but once you get into the playoffs. So that's my thoughts on that. So, so Joe, no picks, but congratulations. <laughs> awesome stuff. Okay. Uh, Kyle adding in jokes aside, more as well played their best game of the season. Jawan Howell with his third straight 100 yard um, and a score game. 6'3", 200, pa- 200 pounds is a load to bring. Yeah, I watched his highlights. He's very impressive on his highlights. Um, I know he's got some love from Duke. I know he posted that on his Twitter, and deservedly so. At that size, I expect him to get a lot more attention, and now the production is going along with it. So that's a he's a, a really enjoyable running back to watch for sure. All right, Thunder Bookman, one of the best PA guys in the Charlotte Metro area. Running back for number uh, running back number three for Mallard Creek had a heck of a game, three TDs. All right, um, if you tell me who number three is, <laughs> I'll be glad to get his name out there. Uh, I don't have a roster in front of me. We can try to pull one up and uh, find out who number three is. But, you know, great job once again to Mallard Creek. And we talked about that game a little bit earlier with their win over uh, West Charlotte. All right, Kings Mountain 45, Hunter Huss 6. Kings Mountain moves to 3-1 and 1-0 and in the Big South opener for conference play. Um, yeah, good win for Kings Mountain. You know, Hunter Huss is young. They're playing a lot of freshmen and sophomores in a, kind of a rebuilding situation. Uh, but, you know, in those situations, you got to do what you got to do. And Kings Mountain didn't mess around and uh, went out and got the victory. So, uh, congratulations to the Mountaineers, you know, on, on a big win. <laughs> Is all of Moore's ball here tonight? <laughs> all right, I know this is, you know, Coach. Um, we 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 talked about it. We know we said analytics were wrong. You know, we'll go back and look at our analytics. But um, once again, congratulations to Mooresville on that victory. All right, all right. Kyle chime in with Hickory. Hickory beat East Lincoln, twenty-two to twenty-one. Good win for our buddy Joe Glass. He's been on the show before. Um, you know, great job in, in building that program in year one. And, um, you know, wins like that in the area, you know, definitely um, can help establish, you know, what you want to establish. So uh, congratulations to Coach Glass and um, Rico Walker, one of the best recruits around, plays for Hickory. I'm sure he had a big hand in um, that win right there. All right, Jermaine Moss, we at South Mech appreciate you and the producer for coming out tonight. Y'all got a chance to witness the outstanding atmosphere we have going on. I, I, I'm going to tell you something. Um, I was talking with the chain guys, and they, they, I, they were um, real cool to talk to. And uh, they mentioned, you know, a couple years ago uh, when, when Joe got the job and things started out, he said there was, you know, less than 50 people in the stands. But tonight I saw at least probably – 100 to 150 kids all in red chanting and cheering all night long the band was playing the fight song the stands were packed and i know i know it was homecoming but still uh when you got that kind of stuff going on man that 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 just bleeds throughout the whole student body you know one of the things i know kenneth can attest to it when you're winning everything at school seems a little bit better you know, the culture and everyone's in a better mood. Attendance is up. Grades are up. Behavior issues are down. Mm-hmm. And football teams do great things for the school. There you go. So I feel like that's what's going on at South Mech. So, you know, kudos once again to you guys, you know, for everything that's going on. All right. Oh, this is big. North Iredale, 34 nothing over Fred T. Ford. North Iredale snaps an 1,100-day losing streak. Oh, wow. Good. Congratulations to North Iredale. You know where North Iredale is, Ken? Yeah. Yeah. It's in Olin. Olin. North Olin, Carolina. North Carolina. I've never been there. Uh, I, I have not either. <laughs> That's a long ways away. From I, I don't know how I know that, but that's awesome. So, hey. And we may go to Olin one day and celebrate with you guys in North Florida. I think that'd be pretty cool. Congratulations, though. I mean, that's that's really awesome. Uh, Damien, we, we talked about Porter Ridge. Um, you know, their big win over um, Audrey Kell. So, in the playback, it'll be there. 
Congratulations, though. <laughs> Chase Sims chiming in with Salisbury, uh, 49-21 over Thomasville. Congratulations to Salisbury. That's a good win for those guys as well. Um, that, that, that program has been doing really well the past few years, and um, you know, it's good to see. It, it really is. Uh, let's see, Davie County, 73, Reynolds, 28. Good gracious, what is going on in Davie County? <laughs> um, well, that'll be fun to watch. I'll have to find out um, what's going on. Out is that big quarterback still there? I, I can't remember. They had a really good quarterback there a year or two ago. Um, I'd have to look. I hadn't done the Davie County research, but that's that's good stuff, man. Uh, LaShawn, Okay. LaShawn Parks, number three from Mountain Creek is David Lampkin. Yep, I I, I know that. I think he used, did. He used to wear a different number. Um, because I, he's on my CMS best as one of the best athletes. Uh, for this reason, he's fastest kid in North Carolina. Won the state championship in track and field in the hundred meter dash. Um, you know, three touchdown game for 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 David is is awesome. He he can go. He can absolutely go, man. And, and that's what I love to see, you know, about some of our athletes around here. It's just the, the natural talent. And when you get something special like that, you know, you just enjoy it. You know, just like with Harding and Kavoris Crouch a couple years ago, you just don't see that all the time. So, you know, appreciate, you know, really talented kids like that. All right. Um, I think that's all the comments we got right now. I'm going to go to the scoreboard and go down the line and see what we got here. Um Oh my goodness! Um, Chambers, sixty-four <laughs> six over West Mech. Um, I think that offense got its groove back tonight, um, for sure. Um, you know, West Mech is not on the level of a Hickey Ridge, but congratulations to Chambers on that. So, Chambers and Huff with big wins tonight, going into the big matchup uh, next Friday night. Um, Olympic, <clears throat> excuse me, over Harding, thirty-five to nothing. Olympic four and zero quietly on the season. Um, Harding falls to two and three um, after that one. Uh, in the big Friday game at Memorial Stadium, Charlotte Catholic um, over Providence, twenty-one to fourteen. Catholic was up twenty-one nothing in the third quarter, and then Providence scored fourteen and um, had a chance to score late to tie, um, but they went out on downs at the nine-yard line. Um, so, you know, Catholic getting back into the win column after their loss to Blessed Trinity, um, and Providence losing the conference opener, uh, but a good effort for sure. All right. Um, do, 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 do. Rocky River, 48 nothing over East Mech. Um, Justin, uh, Adams from us was there. Um, it was homecoming for East Mech. He's an East Mech grad, so, you know, you got to support your home schools. Um, he did an interview with the uh, Rocky River DB coach after that game. It's on Twitter, so make sure you go check that out. That's uh, pretty cool. Um, so that's Rocky River's win for their conference opener. Um, let's see. Shel oh, Big Shelby. Big Shelby won big. <laughs> 63-21 over Cherryville. Um, so we, we kind of felt like that was going to go that way. Um, Crest over Ashbrook in kind of a back-and-forth game. Uh, 44 to 27. So a lot of excitement down there at Ashbrook, but, um, my buddy Joe Hughes kind of reported that coach James was um, being treated on the sideline for Ashbrook. So hopefully coach James will be okay. He's one of our favorites. He's been on the show before. Um, but Crest getting that conference opening win, um, was a good win for those guys. Hey, right, East Gaston won 35, 26 over Cherokee. So, Hey, Kenneth. That's another loss for you. God, oh, that was the one <laughs> game I was hoping for. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. But uh good win for East Gaston. <clears throat> but obviously not a conference game. So Cherokee, you know, I believe, was two and one. They were. They were. Um Hey, Charlotte Latin <laughs> remaining undefeated on the season. They're now four and oh, 33 nothing over Legion Collegiate, so you know, they're off to a, a really good good thing going on down there. Um for sure. That's that's awesome after the year they had in the spring. Um, let's see. George Washington Eagles defeated Nation Ford forty six to thirty one. I don't know where the George Washington Eagles are from, but congratulations on the victory. And an interesting note, next week Nation Ford will be playing Harding in a non conference game 
at Nation Ford. So, you know, once again, kudos to these schools making things happen, um, you know, when opportunities present themselves. Um, now, this one was a little a little bit of a surprise, but not too much. Cutbertson over J.M. Robinson, 27-6. to six. You know, J.M. Robinson was in our dirty dozen. They were undefeated. Uh, we said Cutbertson, you know, was a dangerous one in three team because they had been playing teams tough, and, you know, that comes to fruition uh, tonight. Uh, but, once again, it's not a conference game, so, you know, Robinson will be all right. And um, they, they open conference play next week, right, Kenneth? I would imagine so because there were so, – uh, I would imagine so. Okay. All right. Good steal. Uh, Monroe, big over Sun Valley tonight, 60-21. to 21. Good gracious. Um, <laughs> Monroe getting that offense going. We know they're explosive, and they had it rolling tonight. Uh, York with a big regional win over Rock Hill, 17-12. to 12. Um, Lake Norman Charter winning over Union Academy, 48-18. to 18. And, oh, Parkwood came through for you, Kenneth. 22-21 over Piedmont. Wow. Um, Piedmont uh, had – Pied- yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, Piedmont went for a field goal with two seconds to go. Yeah. missed it. It was wide right. Uh, Tim Winters from Union County Football was there and um, had the good updates um, on that one. Never All right. Winters. Um, oh, wow. And I, I saw this come across um, a little earlier. South Point over, and this is Rock Hill South Point, over South Florence, 33-27 to 27 in triple overtime. Uh, wow. <laughs> I actually had someone send me a video. They went live when the overtime started, and um, I want to go back and check that out later on. Um but South Florence is a very good team in South Carolina. I believe they were ranked number eight in 4A, and South Point was number four. So possibly a playoff preview. Don't know, but um, well-played game. And um, kudos to South Point for pulling out a big victory. And this was a game that I believe was scheduled at the last minute because of COVID um, things going on. So once again, kudos for teams – you know, playing each other, um, really good teams playing each other and getting that work in. And it's best for the kids, too, because you never know how many experiences you're going to get, which we've said over and over. Um, Forest Hills win over Montgomery Central 13-10. to 10. Uh, Congratulations to Forest Hills on that victory. Uh, Burns big over Highland Tech 72 to nothing. Good gracious. Uh, congratulations to Burns. Um... Carver in the football only conference defeating Christ the King 32 to 26 in overtime. So congratulations to Carver for coming down and getting a big win. And Kenneth, you'll like this one. Concord over East Rowan, 30 to nothing. Yeah. So uh yeah. Concord, yeah, Concord bouncing back strong right there. Concord High School first place in the South Piedmont Conference, baby. There you go. Give me time for first place. <laughs> But wins in the conference is when it counts, man. Um, Oak Grove over West Stanley, 27 to nothing. Thomas wow. Jefferson over Bessemer City, 42 to nothing. Uh, and Concord tied with West Rowan, who beats Carson Big, 49 to 14. Um, let's see what else we got here. Northwestern and Rock Hill over Greenville, 28 7. Good win with those guys. Uh, Lancaster getting on the board with a 28 nothing win over the Central Eagles. Good job, Lancaster. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Freedom over your former Central Cabarrus Vikings, Kenneth, 42-19. to And then we got Northwest Cabarrus over South Rowan, 25-20. So I think we got that one right. So that's that's another win for us. So, so we Did I get it right? Yes, you did. I remember. Which game was it, Pep? I'm sorry. That was. I'm dealing with an idiot online. Okay. (laughs) Northwest Comparis over South Rowan. I got two. Yep. There you go. So you can feel a little bit better. Um, Big win for Forest View 43 20 over North Gaston. Uh, Congratulations to the Jaguars winning that conference opener. Fort Mill on the board tonight with a win. Uh, 21-13 over Lugoff Elgin in South Carolina. So, 
Congrats to the Fort Mill Yellow Jackets on their first win of the season. All right. Um, then we got any more scores. Here we go. Reagan beat East Forsyth 22 to 18. Big win for Reagan up in the uh, triad area. That, that has to be looked at as a little bit of an upset right there. Reagan is a good team, but East Forsyth was, I think, top five in the state in some polls. And a big win for Reagan right there. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I, I got you, Joe. <laughs> Not bad. Uh, Big Web on the show. Uh, what's up, guys? Good team win tonight. Lee had six touchdowns. See, the power of CFI and football focus weekly. We go interview your quarterback, Webb. Six touchdowns. Hey, that's what we do around. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Young man is very talented. Um, I love looking at his film. And, um, you know, it's great that he goes out there because he works hard. Uh, we did the interview, and he was coming. He was actually still at the field getting working on an NFL Sunday. I mean, I didn't do that. Maybe that's why we were terrible. But <laughs> great job. Great job. Uh, he's got his stats right here. 8 of 10 for 250 and 5T. Good God. gracious. Who did they play? They played um, Cherryville. Terrible. Yeah, them. Them, yeah. You know, true story, Pat. When I was growing up, my dad had a friend from Terrible, right? <laughs> yeah, a little pool out in the backyard, and they were outside doing whatever they were doing. And about 9 o'clock, it's, it's nighttime. My little sister goes out and, and gets something. She left a towel or something. Mm -hmm. About 30 seconds later, this guy from Turrible goes out there, and there was a coiled-up copperhead. I mean, coiled up, oh, wow. head ready to strike. And this Turrible guy picked it up by the tail, and he goes – well, he starts always saying, y'all know I'm half Cherokee, right? Picks mm -hmm. this copperhead up by the tail and starts twirling it over his head like Petey Pablo. And he's yelling, yee yeah. Next thing I know, he'd slung that joker into the woods. And honest to God, true story, the next morning, that snake was still dangling from this tree branch when I got up. True story. <laughs> Terrible. Always earn my respect because of that man right there. With that being said, we're going to wish you a good night. <laughs> Thanks for watching Friday Night Live. Make sure you check out Between the Lines next Tuesday night. Football Focus Weekly Wednesday night and every Friday night after the games for Friday Night Live. For the engine and the professor, Kenneth McClamrock, I'm the pet man, Matt Morrow. Thank you for watching. Not going to Cherville. <laughs>